All right, today we're going to talk about uh, substitution, changing variables uh, when you're working with multiple integrals. So we'll start off by taking a look at an example that kind of uh, suggests where we're going to go with this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and apply a substitution to change of variables to simplify an integration. So we want our goal here is to find the area enclosed by ellipse. We're going to end up deriving the formula for the area of an ellipse using a double integral. We know that integrating the area differential over uh, our region as the domain of integration will give us the area. So while this this integral might be possible but likely challenging, let's see if we can find a different way to do it. So if we could turn this ellipse into u squared plus v squared equals one instead of the x over a squared plus y over b quantity squared equals one, then we'd have an easier time of integrating it. Why? Well, because this would be, whoops, sorry about that. This would be the unit circle just in the uv plane instead of x and y. And we typically let uv horizontal and uh, v v vertical and uv plus minus or u squared plus v squared equals one is the unit circle. And we know the unit circle of this. We know this thing has area pi. So we might be able to reduce this down to an exercise in geometry. So let's see what happens. What, what could we do? Well, if, if that's our goal, if we want it to be u squared plus v squared equals one, we could just take u to be x over a, and maybe you guessed it already, but v, we could replace uh, y over b as v. But pause here for a second. And uh, And let's think about this. All right, we're gonna take what's gonna feel like maybe a little tangent, but let's go back to a single variable calculus. Let's take a look at the integral of x, seven uh, x e to the x squared power with respect to x. So this thing's tailor-made for a substitution. We say, hey, I spot this guy, x squared, hidden up inside of another function, and then it's something that looks somewhat like its derivative. So a substitution may help us out here. So we're gonna use u is equal to x squared. Then we're gonna go du, take the derivative du dx uh, is equal to two x and dx. And we know we can algebra differentials, so it's okay to kind of do it like that rather than have the dx as the denominator over du, under du. Okay, so we're gonna make this substitution in. And the way I like to do this is, um, yeah, I can probably maybe see what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna solve for dx and substitute directly in for dx. So that means my differential is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna replace dx with the entire expression one over two x. Okay, so we've got our substitution set up and we'll go ahead and apply it in this step. So we got seven x e to the u now, and then replacing dx with my differential expression at one over two x, du. Now nicely, those x's will reduce away, and I'll pick up and continue this down here where we have a little bit more room. So this is now 7 uh, over 2 e to the u du, which is integrated 7 halves e to the u plus some constant c, and then reverse our substitution, 7 halves e to the 2x power plus C. Now that's where we're used to that. We do that all the time in uh, multivariable calculus because we've established that we're allowed to in single variable calculus. And so if we're going to make a substitution, here it kind of feels like we're making two substitutions, but each of them only involves a single variable. So I'm going to try and apply this same kind of idea of relating the differentials just individually and see what we what happens. Okay. So under this substitution with that kind of foreshadowing, our, our integral becomes, okay, now we're gonna do the double error, double integral over the region, which is now expressed as u squared plus v squared equals one or less than equal to one. But we don't know uh, how to relate these differentials. How does this relate to this? So let's let's go ahead and do that, those differential cal uh, calculations, thinking of them as of them as two kind of regular substitution like we're used to from single variable calculus, like the example we just did. Okay, so if we make the substitution u is equal to x over a, I should have said at the beginning of this, a and b are just arbitrary constants. And if you look at the graph, it shows that, that it's an ellipse uh, centered at the origin with, a, I forget what they're called, major and minor axes given by related to a and b, that'll work. 
All right, so back to our substitutions. If we use u is equal to x over a, a is a constant, and so we can do the differential calculation. du is the derivative of x over a with respect to x. Well, that's just one over a dx. And then solving for dx, we have a times du over there. Okay, so this suggests that maybe for dx, we can substitute in a times du to get fill in this kind of question mark over here. All right, now applying the same logic to v, v is equal to y over b, and b is a constant, y is the variable. We're going to take the derivative, but this time with respect to y, so dv is equal to 1 over b dy, and again, solving for the differential dy, we have dy is equal to b times dv. So it looks like now we can relate dy using that expression. So putting all that together, we have what we think is going to happen, dx dy is equal to a b du dv. Okay, so what we did is we said, hey, this is all good here. Let's give a, a specific color to, to this little guy right here. And so that comes from there. Okay, and that would turn our integral into this. I would turn it into the double integral over a unit circle expression uh, of AB, those are constants, du dv. So if we wanted to calculate this integral, well, we're going to sneakily just apply a known fact here. We know that the integral over the unit circle, the area integral of the unit circle is going to be pi because the area of the unit circle is just pi. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, AB are constants. So I can pop them out in front of the integral like that. And then that integral is just the integral of the unit circle in, in UV coordinate system, which is going to have area pi. So our integral reduces down to pi times AB. And that is the formula for the area of an ellipse, if you were curious, at least one that's centered at, a, at the origin. Now, if that seemed like, OK, this doesn't seem too bad, it's not always this easy. There's quite a bit going on underneath the hood that we haven't gotten into yet. And so that was just kind of a get us started uh, example. And so here's an introduction. So why would we ever want to do this? Why would we want to make substitutions and evaluate an int integral in terms of a different variable? Well, we did it again. We do it all the time in with terms of just one variable. But now we're going to do it in terms of two, three, and how many ever more you want to get involved. So generally, we do this to simplify in the same reason we did for single variable calculus, to make it easier to do the integration or possibly simplify or make it easier or possible to do the integration by substituting for either the integrand, cleaning up the integrand with a substitution, or making the limits of integration prettier with a substitution. So just as a hypothetical, say we have an integration that becomes easier under the substitution or transformation of coordinate system, uh, u is equal to 3x minus 2y, and v is equal to x plus y. How do we relate these differentials? Well, so say we're interested in integrating over the, uh, whoops, did I? So say we're interested in integrating this over kind of uh, this, this region defined in the xy plane as 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. That's the unit rectangle or unit square, if you will. So over here on the left, these go here, whereas these uv uh, variables go there. And all I did was I took, um, I took one and zero and plugged it in for x and y in the u and v expressions to get the related, oops, to get the related coordinates under the uv uh, coordinate system. Down here on our graphs, this is the change in area before. Remember, we're trying to relate the differentials here, so we need to concern ourselves with how the area is changing. We've got x and y and u and v, respectively. And I tried to, I highlighted the different line segments to emphasize that where the blue line in the left goes to the blue line on the right and the blue line or red line segment on the left goes to the red line segment on the right. And it's a good exercise to kind of sit down and, and pause and do this because this is part of the process that we'll see when we're doing change of variables and in multiple integrals. So again, our goal here is to relate the area differentials. And so, it might be helpful to kind of consider the area of this thing. Well, the area of the of what I'm calling the unit square here, 
is just one. And the uh, area, it turns out, for the parallelogram on the right is five. So we see that the change in area under the UV coordinate system uh, is about five times the change in area under the XY system, or in the inverse relationship or reciprocal relationship, the change in area in the uh, XY system is about one fifth the change of area in the UV coordinate system. So we're getting a little bit outside of uh, calculus here, but for any of you guys uh, all that have had an introduction to linear algebra, um, we know that linear transformations, and this is what we're doing, uh, take rectangles to parallelograms. So, you know, we transform this rectangle into a parallelogram under the transformation using this. And there's a, I put a link in here to a three blue one brown video. It's like less than 10 minutes, but it does a phenomenal job of kind of introducing this concept if you've seen it before or if you're curious at all. So here's another fact. The determinant of a two by two matrix uh, represents the area of the parallelogram, if we're just talking a linear transformation here, uh, of the vectors in that matrix. So notice I've quietly labeled these two vectors as V1 and V2. And so if we, the area of that parallelogram, well, the change in area, that area of that parallelogram is related to this, uh, this matrix given by these two vectors. Well, the blue vector is three, one. So I put that in the first row and the uh, uh, black vector V2 is negative two, one. So I put that in the second row, calculating out the determinant, you see that you get five. So it seems that the determinant of that matrix is related to this, uh, somehow relating these differentials. So there's just a review of the transformation we have and just applied, but notice something. Um, what do we see about this? Well, for this first row, those are the partial of u with respect to x is three and the partial, uh, oops, I have it entered in transpose. All right, so, as is typical with these videos, I'm, I run into a little hiccup of how I've entered things here. And so this isn't exactly correct, but rather I see that, hey, that, that column appears to be related to those. So let's just fix this. Use of X, use of Y. And then over here, as we look at the other column, it's related to the partials with respect to of uh, V with respect to X and Y respectively. So it seems there's something going on relating uh, that allows us to relate the area differentials, with the determinant of a matrix of the partials that are involved in the transformation. Oops, went two slides. So now we're gonna introduce uh, something called the Jacobian matrix. Um, and so the Jacobian matrix, I'm gonna call it J, is a matrix of first partials of the transformation or change of variables or substitution that you've made. So if you have a transformation uh, and u and v are the input variables, which take the coordinates x comma y to x in terms of u and v and y in terms of u and v, then the Jacobian matrix is defined as uh, the, the partial with respect to the row, the first row is the partials of x with respect of u and v. And then the second row is the partials with respect of y with respect to u and v. So the determinant of this matrix is related to how much our transformation scales the area. Uh, so let's take a look at the determinant of the matrix. So the determinant of the Jacobian the, is notated as determinant of j. And you won't see this very much in books, but that's just to emphasize what we're doing. We're going to use vertical bars as the standard way to denote a uh, determinant of a matrix. But here, this little guy right there. This little guy is very common notation. And don't confuse it where, well, sometimes different textbooks and, and uh, you'll see it in the homework. Uh, the homework asks for the Jacobian. And what they mean is the determinant of the Jacobian matrix. So this symbol right there, the partial of XY over a partial of UV, it's just read as the, the Jacobian matrix, uh, is related to not the original matrix, but the determinant 
of that Jacobian matrix. So how can we use this to relate differentials? So we can use this relationship between the scaling factor for area of a transformation and the determinant of the Jacobian to relate the differentials in a double or triple or beyond integral um, like this. The absolute value of the determinant, and that's important, the absolute value of the determinant and the Jacobian relates the differentials of multiple integrals for a change of coordinates. And I said multiple integrals there because this works for uh, three variables or as many as you need. But for our purposes, we're going to stick to two. So dx dy is related to the determinant of the Jacobian. If you have uh, this Jacobian will, rely, will arise out of things as x as a function of u and v. So you can take the partials of x with respect to u and v and y as a function of u and v. But there's this very, very nice relationship here when we're dealing with Jacobians. And that's what I'm going to call kind of an inverse relationship, or, or you could call it a reciprocal relationship. Um, say you don't have your transformations given as x in terms of u and v and y in terms of u and v, but rather you have u in terms of uh, x and y and v in terms of x and y as l as well. Well, then you can do the determinant of the Jacobian in that way. So this would be the determinant of u with partial of u with respect to x, partial of u with respect to y, partial of v with respect to x, partial of v with respect to y. Take the determinant of that and you've got it. Okay, I shouldn't have written it quite like that. Yeah, this uh, careful with this notation. These, uh, these vertical bars aren't the determinant, but rather these vertical bars represent the absolute value of the determinant. This, this, uh, this partial notation is the determinant of that matrix. My point is, depending on which way you have your substitution written and which way you're working, you don't always have to uh, think that, oh, okay, I'm stuck with this one formula. I have to do it this way. If it's easier to calculate the partials and then the related determinant with respect to uh, you being solved in terms of x and y, you can use this formula on the left. It's basically pick whichever one's easier, and then you can just algebra the relationship into shape and put the the relating the relating uh, the extra part that relates the two differentials on the correct side of the equation. Just use an algebra. So yeah, notice there's a reciprocal relationship here. If one is hard to calculate do the other one and then algebra it into shape. And again, remember that the partial fraction looking thing is really represents the determinant of the Jacobian and those vertical bars that you'll see are the absolute value of that determinant. That's important. So if you're asked to find the Jacobian uh, uh, in our homework and sometimes, usually people sometimes mean the determinant of the Jacobian, I try and be really very specific, so there's less ambiguity there. Okay, so we can use this to explain why we have that extra factor of R when we switch from cart uh, rectangular coordinates into polar coordinates. So think of uh, polar coordinates as a change of variable, where we're going to have x be written in terms of R of theta as R cosine of theta, and y written in terms of R and theta as R sine of theta. So let's now calculate the determinant of the Jacobian. Well, the Jacobian is the matrix that is of partial derivatives with respect to R and theta instead of U and V this time. And so uh, the upper left corner, X, our X, or our X variable, uh, the partial with respect to R, uh, R cosine theta is just going to be cosine of theta. And then over here, the partial of X with respect to theta is going to be negative r times sine of theta, because cosine of theta has derivative negative sine of theta. Similarly, for the second row, um, the derivative of y with respect to r is sine of theta, and the derivative of y with respect to theta is r cosine of theta. Now we have the vertical bars around the outside of this to represent the determinant of this matrix, because that's what this represents, the determinant of the matrix. So you have this diagonal multiplied together, cosine, times r cosine of theta. And then we're going to subtract this diagonal uh, minus negative 
r sine of theta times sine of theta. Well, we've seen this and done this game before, but in factor out that uh, factor of r, cosine squared plus sine squared gives us one, and there you have it. The determinant of the Jacob Jacobian is r. So if we were to apply this formula and relate the differentials, dx dy is equal to the Jacobian uh, du dv. Well, I'm gonna replace the Jacobian because we're not working with u and v or our variables are r and theta. And we just calculated this whole expression inside the absolute value bars as r. And now since radius uh, and polar coordinates can always be taken to be positive, well, we can get away with dropping the um, absolute value bars. Okay, so here's a general method to attack the process of making a change of variables in multiple integration. So general outline, um, and I'll say, at the end I'll say, hey, you can change up these steps if you like, but the first step always has to be pick your change of variables, choose the substitution or transformation that you're gonna apply. Then use what we know about the differential relationship. We're gonna calculate and use the determinant of the Jacobian matrix to relate the differentials. And we're gonna use whichever one is most convenient and easiest for us to calculate and then algebra it into shape as necessary. And then we're gonna, since we're making a substitution, we need to rewrite the integrand in terms of our new variables. And in single variable calculus, it was pretty easy to kind of undo these substitutions. In multivariable calculus, it's less common and evaluate, sorry, in single variable calculus, it was, it was relatively easy to undo the substitution and evaluate your definite integral in terms of the original variable that you had. And some students like to do it that way. I tend to like to do it that way. Um, but when we're working in multivariable calculus, it's usually easier to just convert your limits of integration in terms of your new variables. And so in order to do that, you have to sketch out the domain of integration as it originally was. And then you have to sketch out what it is under our transformation and then set up the integral with respect to our new domain of integration in the new coordinate system. And that's a lot of words. So let's see if we can uh, yeah, set it up as usual using your change substitution of variables after you sketch out the domains and how the transformation changes them. Now you can do this in different orders. I mean, pretty much always, yeah, you gotta choose your, your substitution first, but you can fill in the blanks um, in whichever order you prefer. I just kind of like to do this order. And you'll see, I kind of blur the lines of these two a little bit um, and combine them and, or sort of do them twice, if you will. So let's take a look at an example. So here's an integral. The integral with respect to y from y to zero to y is equal to four. And then we see our x bounds as x is equal to y over two and the upper bound of x is equal to y over two plus one. And we want to integrate the function two x minus y over two. Uh, in the order dx dy. So to change variables, uh, what would we do here? Well, I kind of see some similar things. I see that this shows up a few times, um, and then I kind of see this expression. And while this is something we could absolutely probably do with regular old rectangular coordinates, as an example, just let's do it using a substitution. So let's try and simplify both the limits of integration and the integrand. And so we'll just choose u to be the entire integrand. You know, just say, all right, u can be this whole integrand. And then just for fun, I kind of tidied it up a little bit because we're going to be working with it a little bit. Uh, maybe it will be easier to work with that way. And now for tidying up the limits of integration, say, hey, this guy shows up a bunch. So let's take v to be that guy and let's just see what happens. Okay, so we've made our choice and there they are. u is equal to x minus one half y and v is equal to y over two. And a reminder, u is the same thing as the integrand. It's just been rewritten. So now we need to address the differential relationship. So let's calculate the Jacobian. And since I have these two expressions in terms of u is equal to xy stuff and v is equal to xy stuff, I'm going to use this version of the Jacobian. It's going to be easier than trying to sort of solve and convert those substitutions back in terms of x is equal to uv stuff and y is equal to uv stuff. So the partial of u with respect to x, partial of u with respect to x we see is one. And then the partial of u with respect to y we see is negative one half. 
Next, we're going to take the partials of v. And so the partial of v with respect to x is 0, because there is no x, x uh, expression in there. And the partial of v with respect to y is 1 half. Calculate the determinant of the matrix, and we get 1 half. So the determinant of the Jacobian is 1 half. Fire up our uh, the pertinent formula that relates uh, the differentials given our choice of how we calculated the Jacobian and say, all right, we get that du dv is equal to absolute value of one half dx dy. Again, I'm emphasizing here that these are not, uh, these are not just a determinant, but it's the absolute value bars. And so we need to account for those um, one half. And so du dv there, just multiply both sides by two. And now we can substitute directly in for dx dy as 2 du dv, sort of similar, actually very similar to what we did in single variable calculus with just a single substitution. OK, next, now that we have our change of variables decision made, what we're going to do and our differential related, now it's time to tidy up the integrand. And here's where I kind of blur the lines a little bit. We already related the differentials, but here I'm going to, I know that dx dy, that's not really technically part of the integrand. It's just that. But I'm just putting it all together to see, hey, this is what I'm going to replace inside my integral. integral. And so reminder, um, this expression is just this rewritten. And so I see that that is u up here. So we'll just go ahead and turn that into u. And then last but not least, we relate our differentials. And from the last uh, math we did, we get that dy dx is equal to 2 du dv. And so we'll go ahead and substitute that in. And the integrand gets quite a bit nicer there. So it's now just 2 times u and then our area differential. All right. so. Uh, the next task we need is to, we've got all of that sorted out. Now we need to tackle the limits of integration. So here's where we need to sketch out our domain of integration. And our domain of integration um, under our original given bounds looks like this. And I went ahead and labeled the points as A, B, and C, and the line segments as A, B, C, and D, respectively, so that we can kind of see them. And this is really I just took and you know took this and solved it for y and turned that into y is equal to two x plus one. That gives us this line there, and so forth. And similar logic gives us that. Okay, so there's our domain of integration. And again, we could go ahead and do this problem just like uh, like we have before. It's set up to do it that way, but we're going to do this using change of variables. And so now we need to say, all right, where do all of those points go to, and what happens to the line segments in between them? So the point A equals 0, 0, the origin. When you, when you take 0, 0 and substitute it in for this, you get 0 minus 0. So that's how you get that. And then put 0, 0 using 0 for y, you get that. For C is equal to 3, 4, you put 3 into x. And 4 into y, you get 3 minus 1 half of 4. So minus 2, 3 minus 4 gives me 1 for my u coordinate. And similarly, 4 over 2 is going to give us our v coordinate there. So once you've done that, you've related all your points. The next thing to do is to sketch out what happens to our domain of integration under our transformation in our new coordinate system. And I went ahead and labeled all the related points as a prime, b prime, c prime, et cetera, and the related segments as a is related to a prime, and so forth. And that gives us a little bit cleaner uh, domain of integration. Heck, we're over a rectangle in the u and v, and so we can just go ahead and let u vary between 0 and 1. Whoops, did I not do that right? Yep, I didn't, so let's go ahead and write that. So we can go ahead and let u vary between 0 and 1, and then v can vary between 0 and 2, and that'll give us our limits of integration there in our new coordinate system. So here's kind of a summary of the things that we have done so far and know. And so now we're going to go ahead and apply all that to our integral. And so now this thing, while doable, became pretty darn easy under this substitution, which, yeah, a little bit of work, but it made it an easier integral. So remember, we do this when we can't otherwise do the integral or to just kind of make the algebra and the math easier. Now, I didn't work this one out because, um, you know, derivative of u squared, what has u? 
2 over u is its derivative, well, u squared divided from 0 to 1 is going to give you uh, 1, and then 1 times 2 gives you the rest of it. And that brings us to uh, an end. There are a couple examples posted on the site and things like that. So thanks. <laughs>